you know, in this culture, in this civilization, we've looked at the human body, not just for its physiology, but for its energetic physiology. In yoga, as there is a physical body, there is a mental body and an energy body. So pranamaya kosha can be in many different ways. Out of these seventy to thousand nadis, even if a little over twenty percent is active, you can live fine. Nobody will know anything wrong with you. At twenty percent functionality, you'll feel you're fine. So what is the remaining eighty percent for? There are many, many aspects of it, let me not go, let's just come to the feet. So if you've activated your energies in a certain way, this is true even if you have not. Your hands, palms and souls are always very active energy-wise. Just holding hands binds you like that because energetically there is a certain closeness in holding hands. Because even if you don't know anything about these things, Instinctively, you know, this is how you feel closest. This is why in this culture when we greet somebody, hands coming together does fantastic things. If you are closer to over ninety percent age or hundred percent or at least let's say ninety plus, then your hands and feet have completely different capabilities. It is from this context, this has come that any sage, saint, yogi, anybody, you don't know nothing about him, but if somebody says he's a saint, you go and fall at his feet in this culture because you want to grab something. From there, we have come to this that anybody elderly means you touch their feet, father, mother, whoever else. Generally in ancient India, people became worthy if they were nothing, if they have not achieved anything in the, within themselves, people became worthy of being, you know, bowed down to only after they've completed five solar cycles, which is your approximately sixty years of age. Because by then life matures in a certain way, your energies have moved out of certain other areas of your body and little more concentrated in your hands and feet. So the culture identified this and says, if there is an elderly person, you must touch their feet because there is a benefit. If there is somebody, a yogi, a saint, a sage or whatever you recognize as, you touch their feet. Or if you see a deity, you go touch their feet because that's where maximum receptivity or giving is there. So in that context, the feet or the imprint of the feet is created in different ways. Stone imprints with uh, sacred ash filled in that, they're consecrated in a certain way. There is another one which is copper or brass. There's another one which is much more alive. If you want to use sanadi like a temple in your house, not just for you, for people to come and then, you know, experience that, then you put something like that. In human body, we lose energy from sharp points like fingers, toys, etc. And from round, circular areas, we gain and preserve energy. Scientifically, also we know circle conserves energy as there is no point for leakage of energy. So, when you touch the feet of elders and they place you by touching your head with their hands, then you gain energy in your head which is circular. The energy gained by you is released from the fingers, sharp points of your elders. We all know that. Nerves coming out of the brain are present all over the body. These nerves end at the fingertip of hand and feet. So when you touch the fingertip of the opposite feet of the elder, the energies of two bodies are connected. Fingers and palms become the receptor of energy and feet of another person as giver of energy. When you touch the feet of an elder, keeping aside your ego, then the elder accepts your sraddha or your reduced ego and then heart gives positive vibes and thoughts and energy. We can also say it as karuna which reaches you through their hands and toys. We can also say that a kind of cosmic energy also released by touching the feet 
that connect each other's mind and heart. It is said that when you touch the feet of a good soul, you will choose the right path or you will get the right direction in your life to work. Bowing down and touching the feet increases blood circulation, which is good for health. Some says that there are three methods of touching the feet. One is to lean forward and touch the feet. Second is to sit on the knees and touch the feet. And the third is also known as Sashtang Pranam. In an exercise, it is said that leaning forward and touching the feet stretches the waist and backbone. When you sit on the knees and touch the feet of an elder, relieves the pain of your knee as a person bend his or her knees. All the joints of the body get stretched. In Sashtang Pranam, whole body is stretched and cures the body pain. According to astrology, by touching the feet of elders with loved ones, the defects related to Navgrahas are removed. It is believed that the sun strengthened by the feet of the father, the moon by touching the feet of grandmother, mother, aunt, tai, mother-in-law, etc. Mars by touching the feet of elder brother, Mercury by touching the feet of sister, aunt, gurus and saint. Jupiter is strengthened by touching the feet of Brahmins. Ketu by touching the feet of elder and Venus become stronger by touching the feet of sister-in-law. There are lots of benefit in touching the feet of an elder as it gives a kind of respect and dedication which arose automatically and helps in suppressing the egoistic nature of a person. There are lots of scientific benefits and on the other hand, it is also good exercise which is good for your health. The custom of touching the feet is practiced wholeheartedly and indicates India's rich culture.